Midlands and yes, possibly some spots of rain close to the London area late in the afternoon. 13 to 19 degrees, the temperatures and then that thicker cloud with the odd spot of drizzle continuing to work eastwards through the evening. But for most, it is going to be a dry day. As the week wears on, this area of high pressure that's been with us for a little while relinquishes its grip, allowing a frontal system to push in from the west. It'll be quite a slow feature. It'll take its time, but it does increase the likelihood that we'll see some outbreaks of rain through the second half of the week. But after a weekend that's been quite chilly by day and also by night, the temperatures are a little higher than they have been. But for tomorrow, dry for most, if rather cloudy. Rita. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's all from us for now. I'll be back just after 10 this evening. There'll be full coverage of the UK National Moment of Silence here on BBC One at 8pm. In the meantime, it's time to join our colleagues across the nations and regions for the news where you are. Good night. Thank you for watching. Good evening, I'm Lucy Owen. Welcome to a special Wales Today as we look back at the historic events of the past week and look ahead to the Queen's state funeral tomorrow. Coming up in the programme. Across the country, services of remembrance and thanksgiving for the life of the Queen have been held ahead of the state funeral tomorrow. Around 200 people are currently at Bangor Cathedral to commemorate the Queen. We'll be finding out why so many have been uh, felt compelled to attend services like this one here today. People from all over Wales are making the journey to London to bid a final farewell. I really have looked up to her all my life and I just love the lady, I just do. And as some travel to London, many others from Wales are already in the capital, taking a last opportunity to see the Queen's coffin lying in state. I've been queuing up and I and I saw the Queen and I saw loads of soldiers and the crown. And how did it feel to see the Queen, Ava? Sad, 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 sad. Good evening. On the eve of the Queen's funeral, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's momentous events, as well as reflecting on the ways in which Wales has reacted to her passing over the last 10 days. But we begin this evening with the services of remembrance that have been taking place across the country this Sunday. Jennifer Jones is at Bangor Cathedral this evening, and uh, Jen, a special service underway there. Yes, Lucy, it's just coming to a close now. I sat in for most of that service and it was very emotional. Many people inside the cathedral were visibly moved. Now, Bangor is my home city. I've attended countless services at this beautiful cathedral behind me. But today, there was a real sense of a moment of history with people from all the counties of North West Wales coming together to commemorate the Queen. But the service here, of course, is just one of many services that have taken place across Wales today. So here's Nellie Bird on how so many people have come together to give thanks for the Queen's life. A hymn about commitment and dedication opening the service to remember Queen Elizabeth II at St Mary's Priory in Abergavenny. We pray for the repose of the soul of Her Late Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Services like this are taking place in churches and cathedrals across Wales, a way for people to come together and pray for the Queen and the Royal Family ahead of the state funeral. We offer thanks for the life of Queen Elizabeth. This building is a thousand years old, a witness to the reigns of kings and queens of history. 
but the new king, King Charles, has been to this church a number of times as patron of the church's trust. Adrian Williams is 91 and remembers many of those royal visits. I shook hands with him then, so I follow everything when it comes to the, the royal family. I, yeah. think, I think we're very, very fortunate. I, I love the Queen. I had seen her on one or two occasions, but I think she was a wonderful lady. In the choir today were Maisie and Reuben, who are 10, and Elizabeth, who's nine. It was a pleasure to be singing for the Queen, knowing that she will, she will be able to hear it, but from heaven. I feel very sad about um, how such a great monarch, um, who's reigned for 70 years, has uh, passed away. I was thinking about the Queen about when she died, but it also made me sad. At St Mary's Church in Mould, the service was particularly personal, touching on memories of the Queen's visit here nearly 20 years ago. Many look back to the visit of the Queen in 2003. There are photographs at the back. Mementos from that day are cherished by the congregation. A book of readings signed by the late Queen and Duke of Edinburgh formed a key part of the service today. It was a special time. People look back to it and today as we have remembered Her Majesty, so that visit has come to the fore and been remembered very vividly by the people um, who participated. Members of the congregation said they appreciated the chance to come together. It was very, very moving, actually, far more than I expected, and at one point I couldn't sing, I was too choked. It really was lovely and a great tribute. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad I was here, and uh, 70 years she reigned, and... Um, absolutely marvellous. Uh, I, I, I think she's a wonderful woman. The national anthem ended the services. From queen to king, people stopped to remember, reflecting on history and changing times. Well, I'm joined by the... Bishop of Bangor, Mary Stallard, who has just come out of the cathedral, that service just finished. Why did the church in Wales feel so compelled to uh, organise these services today? It's a momentous time, isn't it? It feels like the end of an era. The work of the church is carrying on the work of Jesus, which is connecting people with the love of God, who's with us at every time of our lives, during the sad times as well as the joyful times. So it's about connecting and being a sign of faith and hope in a time of grief. And how significant is it that everyone was welcome at this service, not just Christians, but people from all walks of life? It's really important in everything we do. In Bangor, we're really blessed with fantastic connections with the diverse communities that are here. So we've had people from the mosque wanting to come and sign the Book of Condolence in the cathedral. Um, the cathedral is open and hopefully always welcoming to, to everyone. Um, and national moments like this bring everyone together. The Archbishop of Wales, Sir Andrew John, was very keen, wasn't he? He said last week that churches should be open where people could come in and have a moment uh, of silence and contemplation and sign those books of condolence that you mentioned. What, what kind of response have you had to that then? It's been wonderful. So many of our churches have just risen to the moment, opened their doors and produced places for people to pray. So it's not just been books of condolence, but people have had candles ready. Um, Places, volunteers and clergy and pastoral workers have just been on hand if people have wanted to talk because this has touched the lives of many people. It, it's awakened other griefs and sadness that people carry. And it's, it's an opportunity for the church to, to step up and be there. And in your sermon today, you said that the life of the Queen could make people take a step back and contemplate how they themselves live their lives. I think it definitely did. She spoke about her faith so um, frequently and so naturally. And, and I think it's made a lot of people look at their own lives um, and think about who they are, who they're called to be um, and what their desires are. OK, well, Mary Stella, the uh, Assistant Bishop at Bangor, thank you very much for your time and thank you for coming out of the service so quickly for us uh, this evening. While the commemorations uh, continue this evening, there is another service at St Giles Church in Wrexham and that starts, Lucy, at 6.30. Jennifer Jones at Bangor Cathedral, thank you very much.
It's been an historic 10 days for Wales, with people across the country finding their own ways to pay their respects to Queen Elizabeth, as well as welcoming the new monarch for the first time. Colette Hume is at Llandaff Cathedral in Cardiff, where King Charles held his first engagement here on Friday. Colette. Lucy, how different the scene is here in the ancient city of Llandaff today. The only thing that's the same is the beautiful sunshine, the autumn sun dappling the cathedral behind me. On Friday, people began arriving here before dawn to greet the new King and Queen on their first visit to Wales as sovereigns. So let's take a look back now at how the people of Wales remembered their Queen. Just after five o'clock this morning, they left Abergele for London, a 250 mile long journey. Those travelling were determined to play their part in a moment in history. I really have looked up to her all my life and I just love the lady. I just do. In the days since the Queen's death, people across Wales have found their own ways to express their feelings. For some, it was the simple act of signing one of the books of condolence opened in town and city halls across the country. Others chose to remember the monarch in the quiet of sacred spaces as churches opened their doors. The First Minister, Mark Drakeford, spoke for the nation. I offer our deepest condolences to all Her Majesty's children and their families on this sad occasion. She will be sorely missed by the many organisations in Wales she championed and supported over so many decades. Last Sunday, Wales witnessed the formal ritual of monarchy. The ancient ceremony of the proclamation was held in the capital's castle. Around 2,000 people gathered to see Charles III proclaimed king. For others, it was a chance to express their feelings about the monarchy and its place in a modern Wales. People have got to, I think, ought to realise um, what the monarchy represents. Anne Daly from the Vale of Glamorgan was one of the first to file past the Queen's coffin as it lay in state in St Stephen's Hall in Westminster. A lifelong fan, she and thousands more have queued patiently in the September sunshine to say a personal farewell. I'm here with a few friends from Cardiff and uh, we just thought it'd be, you know, very nice to come and pay our respects to the Queen. Wales has a new king. It also has a new prince and princess of Wales. The debate about the hereditary monarch's role in Wales has been renewed by the accession of the new king and the creation of a new Prince of Wales. William was a search and rescue pilot at RAF Valley and he and Catherine lived in relative anonymity in Anglesey during his service there. In 1969, Charles was invested as Prince of Wales at Carnarvon Castle. It divided many in Wales. From one of the country's most respected political figures came this heartfelt plea. Whatever form the confirmation um, of the new Prince of Wales will be, we hope that this will be part of an opening of a new uh, chapter in the history of Wales, a history that sees Wales as a country in its own right, uh, side by side with other countries uh, in the Commonwealth of Nations. On Friday, Charles and Camilla made their first visit to Wales as King and Queen. A service of prayer and reflection was held at Llandaff Cathedral. King. Afterwards, the royal couple met the crowds, some of whom had waited since the early hours to greet them. Crowds too at the Senedd and at the castle, together with a sizeable protest. We don't believe that we should have a Wales um, with a, a monarchy in the future. Um, we see the inequalities this in the world and the monarchy doesn't represent that. Inside the castle walls, yet more people there to greet the king and queen. In different ways and different places, people across Wales have marked the death of Queen Elizabeth, remembering her life of service. And Lucy, over the past days, people have told me repeatedly they just wanted to do something. That may be something as simple as laying flowers outside a place of significance, writing in a book of condolence, or coming to see the new King and Queen on their first visit to Wales. 
But I think looking back on this last week and the days before it, Wales indeed has done something. Colette Hume at Llandaff Cathedral, thank you very much. Well, someone who met the Queen on a number of occasions during her reign is the former First Minister, Carolyn Jones. Uh, thank you for coming to talk to us. How would you describe the Queen? Well, we talk, don't we, of something being the end of an era. We say it perhaps too often, but on this occasion, I think it's absolutely right to call it that, uh, as we remember somebody who gave 70 years of service to Wales and to the rest of the UK. I met her on several occasions, uh, one to one, and she was somebody who was very good at initiating conversation. She would obviously had much experience of people being in front of her and freezing a little bit, but she would chat. She wanted to know your opinion. She was well informed and uh, there were 40 minute uh, meetings that I had uh, with her and we were never short of things to talk about. So in some ways, the public persona that she had to present was very different to the uh, very chatty, very conversational, but very well informed person that I was lucky enough to meet in private. Any personal stories or anecdotes that you can share with us? Well, I remember going to London just before Christmas one year when I'd gone up to uh, collect the, the Welsh seal. Now, for people who don't know what that is, it's a, it's a metal disc with an imprint on it. And when laws are made in Wales, uh, a wax seal uh, is placed on top of the law and uh, a press presses down on the seal and the imprint comes through underneath. So I was handed the seal because the First Minister is the keeper of the Welsh seal. And she said to me, how are you? taking those back to Wales I said, well, on the train. And she couldn't quite believe that I'd said that. She asked other people, is he really serious <laughs> when he says he's taking those back on the train, which I did. But uh, at that time, I think she didn't quite believe me when I, uh, when I said that. But she was, she was somebody who obviously took her role very, very seriously. But she was also somebody who knew how to hold conversations with so many different people. Such was her experience. Now, the Queen opened the then Welsh Assembly back in 1999, didn't she? And her last visit to Wales was to open the new term of the Senedd last year. Uh, what do you think her relationship was with the Welsh Parliament? Well, one of the things we have to remember is in 1999, the official advice that came from the Home Office then was not to open the National Assembly for uh, reasons I won't go into, but all to do with um, the state, its status at the time, which has changed a lot since then, of course. But she came nevertheless. Uh, she was aware that it would look particularly difficult if she opened the Scottish Parliament and then didn't open what was then the, uh, the National Assembly. So she clearly felt that this was something that was, that was important, otherwise she wouldn't have uh, done it. And of course, she turned up every time. She, she wanted to show that uh, it was an institution that she took seriously and wanted to open uh, every time she had the opportunity. And let's look ahead to tomorrow and the state funeral. What do you think the mood across Wales will be? How do you think Wales may come together to mark this? I think it'll be a sombre occasion, as it should be. I think in time, of course, people will look to celebrate uh, the aspects of the, the late Queen's uh, life. We do that naturally. We remember somebody in the day of the funeral, and then we, we remember uh, the memories of that uh, person. But I think tomorrow is a day that will inevitably be sombre a day of remembrance, and that, of course, is exactly how it should be, as we remember somebody who gave so many years of service. You have to be in your mid-70s to remember a time when she wasn't there. That's how much of a, an era that's come to an end. Former First Minister Catherine Jones, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your memories with us today. Thank you. Well, the eyes of the world will be on London tomorrow for the Queen's funeral, which will be the largest single gathering of world leaders and politicians in living memory. The First Minister, Mark Drakeford, and leaders of the other political parties in Wales will be amongst them. One constant of the past few days has been the long queue to file past the Queen's coffin lying in state. We've seen large crowds waiting for hours, and in those crowds, many people from Wales who've travelled to London to pay their respects. It's been an extraordinary week and our reporter Gary Owen is outside Buckingham Palace for us this evening. Gary. Lucy, good evening. I've been here for most of the day.
of the past, and things have been changing here by the moment. We've seen politicians, world leaders, we've just seen President Biden, members of the royal family passing by, going into the palace there. And as a result of that, the security arrangements here have intensified. Now, at one stage today, there were crowds of people here in front of the palace, but they were then moved further up, further up the mall there, and now there are thousands and thousands of people waiting there, camping out there overnight to say their final farewell to the late Queen. Well, our correspondent, Stefan Messenger, has been out amongst the crowd talking to some of the people from Wales who've come here to be part of the crowd and the queue. It's amazing that as a nation we can reflect, but also, you know, help people out, which is fantastic. A friendly face in the queue to pay tribute to the Queen. Delan from Newport is here with the scouts and one of over a thousand volunteers drafted in to help manage the crowds. I think it's absolutely, uh, being honest, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I, when I became a young person in scouting many years ago, I took my promise to do my duty to the Queen. And what better time to do duty than be here in her lying in state and support wherever you can. And I'm here till next Tuesday, hopefully supporting the funeral also, doing my duty and being out with the public in that amazing atmosphere. At this extraordinary time of national mourning, this has become, if you like, the people's procession. Orderly, calm, determined crowds making their way slowly but surely towards their moment with the Queen. And in this long queue over the last few days, we've met many people from Wales. For Mikey and Ebony, brother and sister from Pembrey in Carmarthenshire, it's been an experience they'll never forget. So as we walked into Westminster Hall, before the coffin, I actually, I, I, I got so emotional. I met the Queen when I was five years old in Brayport when she was on her Golden Jubilee tour. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just small, I just remember looking up to her in complete awe, um, and then the same again now. Tom, originally from Carmarthen, spent over 12 hours queuing, much of it overnight in temperatures that reached as low as four degrees. In 2002, my grandmother, who's since passed away, uh, and I queued to see um, her mother lying in state. And I thought it was also a nice thing to remember her, and I thought that's what my grandmother would have wanted, wanted me to do. And little Ava, too, from Newport, can always say she was part of a moment in history. I've been queuing up, and I, and I saw the Queen, and I saw loads of soldiers, and the crown. And how did it feel to see the Queen, Ava? Sad and sad, sad, sad. On then for one final journey to Windsor Castle and a service of committal at St George's Chapel. Lord Morris of Aberavon, currently the longest serving member of the Privy Council, which advises the monarch among those attending. We are privileged to be in St George's Chapel to pay tribute to the work of a great constitutional monarch who never put a foot wrong that I know. Another Welsh contingent among the first to secure their spot along the funeral route. Thousands are expected to camp out in central London tonight, while crowds tomorrow could exceed a million people. Well, it looks like it's going to be a cold night here in London, but that doesn't seem to trouble the people I've been talking to. They want to be here to show their respect and their gratitude to the late Queen. From Canada Gate, back to you in the studio, Lucy. Gary Owen at Buckingham Palace, thank you very much. A quick look at some of the day's other news now, and a 50-year-old man has been arrested in Aberavon in Portalbot on suspicion of attempted murder. A 32-year-old man remains in a critical condition at Cardiff's University Hospital of Wales. The incident took place in the Sandfields area of Aberavon on Saturday evening. South Wales Police recovered a crossbow at the scene. Football and Cardiff City have sacked their manager, Steve Morrison. Yesterday, they lost 1-0 at Huddersfield, their fifth defeat of the season. They've had just one win in seven and are currently 18th in the table. Morrison was appointed last October, initially as a caretaker, after the dismissal of Mick McCarthy. Let's return now to the events of the last 10 days. And I'm joined by our correspondent, Hugh Thomas, and our political editor, Felicity Evans, who've been covering events for us. And, Felicity, if I can come to you first of all, what are your reflections on this past week? 
Well, monarchy, the institution of monarchy, is always a balance, isn't it, Lucy, between the past, the present and the future, and that's most obviously noticeable at a time of succession, isn't it? And we've seen that exemplified in the Senate this week, haven't we, where a week ago today the MSs were recalled to commemorate the life of the Queen, and then on Friday they welcomed the new king. And of course, new roles inevitably mean changed relationships. So the politicians are going to have to navigate those new uh, relationships with the new monarch. And it also puts the spotlight on Wales' relationship with the monarchy. And we've seen a, a, a spectrum of views expressed on that by members of the public this week as well, haven't we? But one of the things that the politicians have been debating is the decision by the new king to give the title of Prince of Wales to his son, William, and all sorts of uh, questions questions about how that's likely to work, particularly around whether there's going to be an investiture ceremony and what that should look like. And one other thing I would say is that it's very clear from the new king's visit to the devolved nations this week that uh, the union of the United Kingdom very much at the forefront of the new sovereign's thinking. Yeah, and I think it's worth considering how the king's existing relationship with Wales uh, will influence him in this new role, because being Prince of Wales was always far more than a title for Charles, he would exercise a lot of soft power, bringing people together, getting things happening on you know, areas like river pollution, organic farming, uh, being seen to have influence there without necessarily interfering. He's going to be a bit more restrained as king. We know that. And what, to, to what extent will William emulate his father? Because just as the Queen is the only monarch most of us has known, uh, Charles is the only Prince of Wales most of us have known too. And of course, tomorrow, Hugh, the focus will be very much on the life of the Queen. Yeah, and tomorrow is a moment to celebrate her life with this incredible state occasion. It'll also draw to a close this period of mourning in the UK. And despite all of these modern distractions, it's expected that most of us will watch the ceremony and the, the state funeral tomorrow on television, a chance to reflect as a nation, but also for people to pay personal respects as well. Hugh Thomas and Felicity Evans, thank you so much. Well, let's take a quick look now at what the weather has in store and here's Sabrina Lee. Hello there. It's been a largely settled weekend across Wales. Many of us have seen some lengthy dry spells and Saturday was the brighter day of the weekend for many of us. You've also probably noticed the drop in temperatures to in fact the air temperatures in parts of Powys and Ceredigion on Saturday morning dropped down to freezing in a few spots. So for some of us that was the first frost of the season. Now today temperatures typically a few degrees below where we'd expect at the time of year. As we track through the week ahead then we expect the temperatures to gradually rise somewhat not too much of a difference by day, but more of a difference by night. So noticeably less chilly with a lower risk for catching some frosts. As we track through the rest of this evening, then and overnight, a weak front will bring some spots of light drain and drizzle, mainly to the northern half of the country, somewhat drier further south with some variable amounts of cloud and some clear skies. A few mist and fog patches are also set to develop, and those overnight lows tipping away to 7 to 11 degrees Celsius, a touch lower for some countryside spots. As for tomorrow then, for Her Majesty the Queen's State Funeral, higher pressure generally over the southern half of the UK, but with a weak warm front pushing through that will introduce some areas of cloud across Wales. A few spots of patchy light rain and drizzle too, mainly through the morning hours as we track through the afternoon. I think more places will become drier and see it brighten up somewhat. With a northwesterly or westerly breeze, then we'll see highs of around 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. Looking further ahead then to Tuesday, some large areas of cloud, generally speaking, some spots of light rain or drizzle under some of the thicker cloud. But I think for most of us, there will still be some sunny spells developing from time to time, with temperatures perhaps up a degree or so, with a hot spot of around 19 degrees Celsius. Then looking further ahead on Wednesday, we expect largely settled conditions. It looks like Thursday will be the next front that comes through, introducing some outbreaks of patchy rain and drizzle at times, and perhaps a little chillier this weekend. And that brings to a close this special Wales Today. As the nation prepares to say a final farewell to Her Majesty the Queen during the state funeral in London tomorrow, we leave you this evening with a final look back at the events of the past week here in Wales, 10 days that will live long in the memory. From all of us on the programme, a very good evening to you. Bye-bye.
Dio o galan dichi. traveling the length of the Americas through some of the world.